After 26 extremely eventful years, the final curtain came down on Chicago's time hosting the Sweets and Snacks Expo, which as we discovered threw up plenty of surprises in terms of new product development and ingredients and systems as well as equipment innovations, as we found speaking to many businesses right across the confectionery spectrum from around the world at this final Chicago event before the show heads to Indianapolis for 2024. This show was absolutely incredible. We are, as you know, in the center of the candy and snacks universe here. Um, of course, we are for our last time in Chicago, but we went out big. We have surpassed 18,000 registrants, and of course, we have more than 800 exhibitors. So this is a record-breaking show. Very glad to hear that's the case. And can you tell us a little bit about the, the heritage that it's had with Chicago over the past 26 years? Of course, we've been in Chicago for 26 years. It is considered the candy capital of the world. So those roots go really deep. A lot of brands and companies got their start here in Chicago. A lot of brands and companies continue to exist in Chicago. And then of course, really importantly, this is where we grew our show. We started in 1997 as the All Candy Expo at Navy Pier. You can see here, we are covering so much space in McCormick Place, covering both the confectionery and snack categories. And so we are really lucky to have grown so immensely here. Um, really excited about the future, but we are, of course, saying a very bittersweet farewell to Chicago this year. It's, I definitely sense walking the halls. There's been a real sense of energy and affection for this location. Would you say that's true? in your own experience these past few days? Of course, I, people are so happy to be back together here in Chicago, but uh, you know, we're looking ahead to the future and we're really excited about Indianapolis and Las Vegas. And indeed, on that note, can you tell us uh, a few little tips to lies ahead there in, in Indy? You know, we're, we're revving our engines. We're headed to Indianapolis and we're so thrilled that we'll be able to bring everybody together. We are going to be able to continue to grow the show. Again, we've experienced such great growth here in Chicago, but looking ahead to the future, it's a perfect fit for us for so many different reasons, including continuing that growth path. In, in terms of trends that you've seen walking the halls here, what have you made of the event in terms of what's emerging? There is so much coming our way. I hope consumers get really excited because all the products on the floor are so innovative right alongside our classic and nostalgic favorites. Some of the things we've seen, flavor mashups, so really interesting use of flavors, brand collaborations, so different brands working together that you might not expect social media friendly treats, these really interactive treats that people can share that give them permission to play with their food are really popular. And then package size options you'll see all throughout the floor as people treat, whether they want to treat themselves or enjoy a celebration or occasion with friends and family, they want to have options in the size of their of their treats. So being able to offer them that is really important to the companies here. Before, uh, do you feel that despite some of the supply chain challenges you have, there's uh, some optimism that has emerged from this show? Absolutely. You know, the, the challenges are very well documented, but these companies are working really hard with retailers to make sure that consumers have the treats they know and love, that they remain affordable, that they remain accessible, and that they remain transparent. And so being able to provide that little bit of sweetness, especially in a time that can be challenging for people, is so important to our companies. And I think there is so much excitement, so much optimism, so much buzz out here on the floor that will definitely translate to consumers. Yeah, thanks very much, Neil. It's great to, great to talk to you. It's been a phenomenal response to the show. Um, we always love coming to Sweets and Snacks. It's one of the signature events that we, we participate in throughout the year. Um, and it's really important to us as a company. So the, the, the response has been just phenomenal this year. Excellent. Yeah, so we've really upgraded the stand this year. So if you think about Mondelez, we want to really lead the future of snacking. And we call it Snacking Made Right, which really is the framework to which we look at everything we do in terms of our sustainability and how we interact with our shoppers, consumers and our customers. So we're really trying to bring that to life in the stand and make sure our customers really know and are aware of all the great brands and what we're doing uh, this year uh, in terms of our innovation and our go-to-market strategy. And you're surrounded by Oreos here, so uh, yeah. is it going to be a new flavour for, for 
for this year? Le yes, le uh, very under wraps, uh, but we have lots of innovation coming out next year. It's going to be a really exciting uh, year for Oreo next year, as it will be for many of our brands, but obviously Oreo, signature brand for us, and we're expecting really great things next year. So, yeah, if you think about sweets and snacks, mainly in the convenience channel, what we're looking at, there's four key areas we think Mondelez can help our customers win with. That's in our impulse bundles, it's in our, in our shopper insights and digital, and it's with bundles in general, and we think that brings a lot of value to our customers and our retail partners here. So again, you'll see the booth is set up in that way with different stations and anchor points so that we can bring the customers around in a really interactive way to develop and, and show them some of the insights that we have available. There's some uh, elements of fun as well. Can you talk about some of the interactive points? On the yeah, that's yeah. been really engaging for our for the people here visiting the booth. We've different stages set up where people can take photos with the Oreo uh, cookies, with the milk splash coming down. Uh, we've got Mr. Chips here for Chips Ahoy. We've got the, the Spike character for Sour Patch Kids. So again, really interactive. People are really warm into it. We've met almost 40 customers, you know, in terms of a formal way here. It's been a great way to meet and greet with our customers big and small our distribution partners and of course our, our Omni customers too and our digital uh, partners so just to have everybody in the room have everybody in the same place meeting collaborating it's been phenomenal and then of course hundreds of partnerships and meetings just on the on the floor here it's been a truly fantastic show you know it's such an energizing experience being here I think there's just so much coming out of Ferrero this year uh, especially launch of Kinder Chocolate as you can see we have this huge um, model of the Kinder Chocolate product um, that's our big innovation this year that's going to be coming out in the August time frame um, so we're we're really excited because this is the flagship of Kinder being brought over to the US it marks uh, the way Kinder started, uh, you know, back in Europe in 1968, and it's a product that's specifically crafted for kids, um, but enjoyed by all. And so, being able to fill a gap that we see in the U.S. market with Kinder chocolate is super exciting. You know, this is the biggest confection show of the year, and so having a presence here with our booth, um, with all of our branding, with this many people walking through our booth, really excited to learn about Ferrero, um, is extremely exciting. Uh, while we didn't win at the award show last night, we're really proud to be here and to be representing all of our brands, and this year even including Keep Your Cookies for the first time. The Kinder Chocolate range there, what are your hopes for it this year? Do you think it's going to gain some strong market adoption in the region? Absolutely. You know, uh, we launched Kinder in the market in 2017 with Kinder Joy, the egg, and then Kinder Bueno in 2019. So we're keeping the news on Kinder coming. Um, so 2023 brings Kinder Chocolate. We've already achieved over $100 million in retail sales. So Kinder Chocolate is just going to take us ab above that half a billion dollar mark. Um, so incredibly excited to, to come here and to be continuing to develop, you know, Kinder as a as a master brand here in the West. Now I think with uh, COVID. Um, there was a newfound appreciation for more premium products, and that is absolutely where Ferrero excels. Um, so we saw, you know, Nutella be integrated into baking recipes, for instance, as a baking craze. Um, and because people weren't eating desserts out as much, because they weren't dining at restaurants, they were buying better sweets. And so I think that's really worked in Ferrero's favor. And uh, we continue to see growth in our brands post-COVID. So I think we're right on track. Oh, wow, it's really awesome to be here in Chicago. It's always been a great host city for us. And we're really excited about the fact that this is the first big show post-COVID with lots of attendees, lots of enthusiasm, and lots of excitement. And then next year, we move on to Indy. This has been an amazing year for Perfetti. Uh, we've had record results and are really enthusiastic about the growth that we've been able to deliver. Come there, so can you tell us about the Mentos Award? How do you feel about gaining that as a business? It's always so great to be recognized, uh, especially for innovation. Our company purpose statement, as you know, is innovative treats, better future. So we really want to make sure that we're really focusing on that innovation side of things. Uh, this is our new product, uh, which is our Mentos <laughs> Vitamin Mints. It's actually a first in the marketplace, the first supplement, supplemented mint product. So we won uh, for the best gum and mint in the show, and uh, very much a great testament to the cross-functional team of our R&D folks, our marketing team, and everybody on the business really coming together. Uh, in terms of wider trends you've seen in the market, what's been catching your eye in recent times? Well, certainly we continue 
continue to see an ongoing thread of better for you. So while treats and snacks are something that consumers are always looking for every day, some folks are just looking for something that's got that little bit of additional permission to, to treat. And so that's why we've gone after, in a big way, the vitamin side of things. Uh, if you remember a couple of years ago, we launched our first vitamin gum. And this is our first foray into vitamin mints, which has B6, B12, and vitamin C. This show is uh, such a great uh, welcoming group of the family that is this industry. Uh, I've been in the industry for more than 30 years. I consider a lot of the folks here my friends, my family, and it's great to come back and have a great show together and see folks that I haven't seen since the prior year. Yes, Neil. Yeah, great to see you here in Chicago at the show. Um, yes, just got, actually got off my presentation. And really, the focus was around specifically one type of indulgence this time, um, which was intense indulgence. So last year, uh, we shared some new insights from Barry Calavo around the future of indulgence. And we talked about three types of indulgence, um, you may recall. We had intense, mindful, and healthy. This time, I dove deeper into intense, some new insights, but also really for how Barry Calvo defines intense indulgence and what it means to the consumer in the marketplace. So we talked about what it is, which can be sharing something in a special moment. It can just be simply color and flavor that's involved. Uh, it can be even a new experience, but it doesn't necessarily always mean it's premium or it's more expensive but it's still delivering something the consumer is demanding, which again is something that they can either a little treat for themselves or something to indulge in. So that really was the focus today. It's kind of took them a deeper path of intense indulgence. And we also shared a little bit, six different plays, kind of recommendations that we'd uh, share with our customers of how they can gain a little win in that space, especially given the current economic environment. I would say, like I said, it's a balancing act, and I shared that today too. I think it's a balancing act, but consumers still look to chocolate as a very affordable treat. So I shared, yes, of course, prices have gone up. They've gone, I mean, you know, we can't ignore inflation. We all know it's here. And yes, a lot of us are dealing with the headwinds of that right now, but Chocolate hasn't gone up any higher than comparable other sweet treats. And again, it's still something that's very affordable by most consumers. And the other thing I shared with you really quick is that I shared a survey from Barry Calvo and I also shared one from Innova. And still today, the number one criteria that a consumer looks for when they choose their chocolate, it's not price, it's flavor. So we can't lose sight of ensuring we meet that consumer demand on flavor and not just get stuck on the price. Again, it's a balancing act, but that was some other key messages that were I shared today. Great stuff indeed. And as for the show itself, uh, back here for the 26th and final time in Chicago, how momentous is that, would you say? I, obviously very momentous. Um, I think it's uh, definitely going to be some some different memories since you know everyone's gonna have some great memories of Chicago I mean it's just been pivotal here in, in the city um, so I think everyone's gonna enjoy the time they have here together the fellowship within our you know our customers the industry but I think there's also you know a bit of excitement um, to try you know something new into a different city that we are you know is very welcoming uh, for us to come and join uh, It'll even be a bit more convenient, a little bit more accessible. So I think uh, there's also, yes, there's a sadness that we're, I think, you know, can't believe we're leaving Chicago. But I also think there's kind of like a, a little bit of a curiosity and definitely an excitement to go to try somewhere else. Uh, exciting. We, yeah, we, yeah we've really been very exciting. pleased with uh, the reaction to the product, the quality of it, the designs of it. It's attracted a lot of. Uh, yeah. A, a lot, a lot of, in, a lot of interest. Thank you. Yeah, the Union Jack packaging, um, which, which we've um, shown for the first time here, is yeah. Everyone's gone crazy for the Union Jack <laughs> designs and yeah, up the hundred percent natural ingredients and just everything else that we we offer. And British chocolate. Everyone wants British chocolate. So. We came here on the on the back of 
good development in the last two or three years in, in Canada particularly. And a lot of the supply base to uh, North America is, is the same. So we thought we'd have a good engagement, a good opportunities with uh, direct retail, which is what we've come to to, uh, to, try and, uh, to try and attract, along with our assistance from uh, our agents over in LA. And that's proved to be uh, fruitful today. And as we were discussing earlier, you've also put a lot of investment into new equipment lines, some extension of your lines. How much of a difference do you think that's going to make to you? Yeah, well, we, we came here particularly to uh, to make sales on the fondant creams, or as the patterns as they call them uh, in, in North America, on the back of recent investment in flow wrapping equipment and carton erecting, with a view that if we got a little bit more sales, and it would allow us to then go the full, the full way and put uh, robotics. more automated robotics in place. And that's the real achievement, or so the real uh, ambition over the next year or two is to fully automate the line and keep it even more competitive. Yeah. Uh, you're uh, carrying on a very proud uh, tradition from over 100 years now. How does it feel to be part of that and bringing that over to the US? Uh, it's actually something I don't think about too often uh, until somebody asks me but on a daily basis. And actually, it's strange that I, the history and the heritage and the pedigree of the company is clearly very important and it counts for a lot of confidence in uh, the potential customers might have. They look at it and think, well, it's, I try not to take it for granted, but actually, we're only as good as actually what we're doing today and what those opportunities are uh, tomorrow. Um, and that's what I concentrate on. Based on what you've seen so far, are you hopeful and optimistic that uh, there could be some real potential for the US market here for you? I, yeah, I absolutely do. Yeah, for, well, if today is anything to go by, I would be yeah, very confident that we can crack the US market. Yes. <laughs> Big statement, isn't it? Big statement. The whole market. Yes. <laughs> well, Neil, it's always great to see you, but uh, how great it is to be back here at the Sweets and Snacks Show 2023. And what a great way to kick it off with joining forces with our new distribution partners here for USA, LBB Distribution. And what a great show it's been already. And as, as, as we know, we, we are producers of 100% vegan confectionery. Uh, we specialise in marshmallows and gelatine-free gummies. And of course, the real important thing there is we then look at the allergen of Free Froms, top 14 allergy-free, the world's only all-inclusive marshmallow uh, available. And it's here at the show, but it's more than that deal. It's what we can do with the product, adding value to it, and of course, looking at new retail opportunities as well as food service opportunities. I think it's incredibly growing. It's, uh, it's early days. Uh, we're on the curve. We're in there. And, uh, you know, to be honest with you, it's a real significance to see movement happening in the USA, but it is coming and we're prepared. Uh, more and more inquiries about vegan, free from, and uh, bigger companies, the big brands looking to use our products as an inclusion or decoration, but also consumers out there. We've been out on the streets in the supermarkets, the retailers, we've been looking to see what's there. And boy, there is a gap for us to come into and we will be going into it. And, you know, here we are, uh, Chicago. What a fabulous place. And you know, the Sweets and Snacks show, they know how to put on a great celebration, a great carnival of all this explosion of confectionery. And I would say is in all the traveling we've done this year, and we've seen you around traveling with us, this is a great opportunity to bring fabulous products, showcase it to lots and lots of footfall from all types of, of the retail sectors. We're all so excited to be here, to see our colleagues, to meet with our customers, and talk about all the exciting things we have now and innovation to come. Yes, our newest flavor is Berry Clouds. We have three flavors actually, blueberry, wildberry, and strawberry in this multi-texture and flavor pack. It is one product of the year as voted by 40,000 consumers, so we're getting great feedback already. And it's a fan favorite. It's similar a bit to our watermelon treat in texture. It's, it's incredible just to see all of the industry come together. We're driving the category together and it reminds us all of why we're here. The memories and the rituals tied in the confectionery category is such a gift and we're honored to be part of that for our consumers. Oh, great. Like it's, been, it's great. It, it, this show has been exciting. I mean, the energy is really there. We feel it like I do feel like we've somehow passed COVID as, a, as an impact to any show and the level of energy and our, our booth has been booming for the last two days. We've been wall to wall in customer meetings and discussions. It's just been a great couple of days. I think the, the interesting news that I have for you today is that like when we, when we last met, we were driving great growth. But I think what's material now is that 
This is the first time that Ferrara, as a total organization within Sugar Confections, is the number one share player. So we're the number one share player in every day, we're the number one share player in seasonal. So it's, it's been incredible and our growth is 2x to 3x the category. Our share leadership is you know, two, two, two and a half points above our nearest competitor. So we're, we've got an incredible moment. The, the brand, which is honestly a once in a career business, which is Nerds, Nerds Gummy Clusters. Nerds Gummy Clusters we launched in 2020. We did an extension in 2021. And that business has exponentially grown um, the total um, the total portfolio. Nerds it in 2020 on a four week basis or maybe 3.5 million in retail dollars. In the la latest four weeks we delivered 47 million dollars. So Chicago is where uh, the confections industry really started. So I mean the roots of the industry are here. The roots of Ferrara is here. Like we started here in 1908. And so it's but it's been in, 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 it's in, been an incredible time. I think it's bittersweet. Um, we're going to have incredible memories of Chicago, but I look forward to Indianapolis and Las Vegas in the future.